Uh, we'll see with that. <laughs> That's some payback later. Fucking miserable. Ha! Right. So Snowden 24 has started. It hasn't started yet. We're about half an hour from kickoff, and um, a right palaver from Team Jackson. That's right. We're on a bike. Ha! Don't worry. Why we're on a bike? Well. Where we've had to park the camper van is like about a mile and a half away from the event village and all that sort of jazz. So um, luckily, Mrs. Jacko, bless her heart, she's a better um, scout than I am. Always be prepared. She had the bike, so that um, yeah, she's going to come down. It means I can actually get to the race briefing on time. Um, it's probably quite a good thing. Warm the legs up. Um, new shorts and top, courtesy of Decathlon, thank you. They don't sponsor, won't bore them. Um, yeah, this is, uh, normally I'd be like, this would throw me off and I'd be all nervous and horrible and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, well, even if you're late, it's such a long event that like, if I don't finish, start off exactly at 10, does it really matter? But no, we're gonna be, thanks to the bike, we're going to be there in plenty of time. Um, we're buzzing already for just seeing all the people. And uh, you can probably hear it's very windy down here. I hate to think what it's going to be like at the top. Apparently, two o'clock, sun comes out, wind dies down, rain stops. We'll see. We'll see you on the mountain. This video is the background story, the raw stuff, the gritty, the nitty, just filmed on my iPhone from, I guess, two things. One was Snowden 24 event, which I naively at best thought that I would be able to carry that on and uh, to do a few extra repetitions of Snowden to do what would be called Everesting Snowden, being able to go to the height of Everest through climbing multiple times Mount Snowden. Mount Snowden is just shy of a thousand meters. Everest is over 8,800. It meant doing nine reps of Snowden. Four, three, two, one, go! Our race is underway, the Black Diamond. Snowden 24. Not that fast at the start. Our runners are underway. They are making their way up onto Snowden 24. Excuse me. Cheers. Sorry. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. It's Saturday. It's busy. You can't close the track for the event. They won't be here in the night time legs though. So that'll make that easier. Here we are, start of rep two, actually half a K into rep two already. Uh, rep one was really fast, two hours, five minutes. Fastest I've ever done. Uh, we'll see with that, <laughs> have some payback later. But all in all, doing all right. All right, change of reverse. It's busy at the top. Rep two. Coming in to the turnaround point. We ain't queuing. We're up there. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
Yeah. We're coming down off rep two. It's half past two. Um, I think I scheduled myself to finish this rep at three. I've got two and a half K. That shouldn't take half an hour. So we're sort of on schedule, slash slightly ahead of schedule. On the way up, absolutely horrendous to be fair. Um, and then started to get some energy from mainly um, a lot of gels. <laughs> mainly a lot of gels. And then just the difference of like coming down, just being like, oh, it's such a, it's still hard. It's a bit easier, obviously, and a different experience. And then just started becoming my own hype man. Like, come on, let's go. Um, yeah, and it buzzed me up for a bit. This last bit coming down is nice in that you can get a bit of a better stomp on like 650 pace. Like it's not particularly fast, but you can get a bit of a stomp on for me. Um, it's going to be hard going up on rep three, let's be honest. A lot of walking, but um, we're doing it. We're still in the race. It's not a race, but we're still moving. And that's all that matters. Trois, rep three, coming to the top. Trick point. No comment. Rep four coming up and actually, there's four of us. We've got some support. And uh, Kevin is a machine. Just been running around casually trying to find Snow and he's finally got him. But obviously without any shoes on. And uh, we're going to see how the, <laughs> how the path. I'm interested to see how you get down. I'll be fine. <laughs> he's a machine. Look at him. <laughs> Rep four. Ben, Kevin with his bare feet pushing on. He wants to get right to the top. <laughs> Actually, 146. We're nearly there. Actually, not any slower than the one before. And it felt like a pedestrian pace. Be honest, Ben, how slow did it was it? <laughs> it's quite slow. <laughs> <laughs> he should have come for the first one. We did 205, baby. <laughs> no, it's good pace. <laughs> it was disease. It was pathetic. Here we go. Yeah, I feel like anything under two hours. Here she is, oh. my hero. Oh, Look at her, she's a machine. She's a machine. <laughs> she's not guys. made of real. She's a different, she's not made of human cells. <laughs> Is there no one to greet us? <laughs> yeah! This is our, get the tag. That's the line. Kieran thought the tag meant that I was like some sort of police. Thank you. All right, Kieran, wait for the top. Yeah. Kieran thought I'd um, been in trouble with the police and that was like a proper tag, police-wise. Oh. Drink in some of them views. Give me a little fist pump. There's Kieran, wait from the top. There he is! Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. Are there any shoes up there? You can borrow? <laughs> right. Let's do it. On a mountain. Look at that. That's Krivgor over there. Just going away into the smoke. Nothing better in life than being at the top of a mountain and sharing it with other people. And so. It wouldn't be the same on your own, I don't think. No, I don't think so. It's nice. Take a few more as well. Yeah, it's mega. I reckon I could have a job as like a, you know, just like a mountain guide or something. I think so. Have a feast your eyes on that. It's a video now, so you can just... <laughs> <laughs> Look at the 
sunset already. <laughs> sunset! Beautiful. Coming down from rep four. Quattro, as the French would say. Here he is. Just keeps popping up places. Just observing that. Who needs a telly? When you got that, right? <laughs> it's a familiar sight behind Mrs. Jacko, the old homemade head touch. It's the old one, two are back together. Rep five, first for Mrs. J. And what a beauty it's going to be. It was going to be some romantic sunset together, but the sun's gone. <laughs> hey, mate. It's a hell of a touch. Spirits are high. Got my joicy. Don't know if you can see that's the top, the twinkle up there. Hey, my friends. Hello. Hey. Oh. oh, you got me. Uh, yeah. We're doing I'm it for like the gang. My feet are like. Like, and we don't have any problems with the knees and hips. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly so. You're going to get loads of blisters on the bottom. Yeah, and you're not going to with those bad boys. I mean, they hurt a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, but, but your not, feet. They're not getting. Hurt. I don't care what you're wearing. Going up Snowden five times, your feet are going to hurt. <laughs> but not having blisters <laughs> is a mega. Oh, Like Blair Witch. What number, Pat? Huh? What number? No, no what rep? Oh. Rep five. That's where we have to get to. This little line here. Uh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Damn moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone wants a bit. Have you never seen the moon before? <laughs> Look at this. Freaky. <laughs> Coming down from rep five kilometers to go. Ooh. Ooh dat. Ooh dat. Man like Jacko. That's me. One, two, three, four, five, six. That actually makes me seventh, which is a little bit scary. I don't know if that's true. No. I don't know, I'm confused. I'll take it. This is the start of rep six. And it's and it's sleep for an hour and a half. I guess actually body feels are not too bad. <sighs> it's tough now. It's tough. Right, Jacko's struggling, but I'm gonna be the hype man. Rob is a fucking machine and he's just stopped struggling. He's on his eighth rep, he's currently the leader. And I was like, no, come on, boy, we're going. Give us a little wave, Rob. <laughs> it's like, fuck. So he's doing eight. And if he does this, he wins easy. And we're, uh, we're miles over halfway, yeah. We've got like 3K.
Be the right leg. Uh, rep six. Finito, George. Man like Jacko is like. Uh, I can't go up here again, so get down. See Rob win. He's promised to buy me a pizza. How many? Six. Not as good as seven. Or right. eight. Or nine. Has anyone ever done ten? Uh, I'm calling bullshit on that. Eight. Yeah. Eight was that eight last year? Eight last year yeah. And uh, Rob's on eight now. He's done it, right? He's about to do it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll never see me again. <laughs> Coming down, that's the view. Um, I'm in the actual, fully in the event now because. I've got to get back down for 10 o'clock for this sixth rep to count. And it is so slow, and so painful, and so steep that it's just, pardon my French, fucking miserable. But no, I set out for like, regardless of the time, I'm going to try and do nine, but when you reach your limit, like, Amazing event. Loved it. I've got to get this done. I've got to get this finished. But it's like that. The old one too. Team Jacko. Mrs. J out front. Want to help us get down <laughs> for the sixth and what will now be the final. Look at the view. Oh, unbelievable scenes. Anything to say, Catherine? Yeah, well done, Dave. Huh? Well done, Dave. Oh. What was your favourite thing? <laughs> that I've made a sense of. I love going up. No, you... I like my head. Just sit in the I thought it was that I made a sensible decision. Oh, oh yeah. Final straight days. Um, glad that I'm doing six, <laughs> not nine. Calling it no. a day now rather than six pm tonight slash oh, eight pm. It would take us. It's now. Way long. Taking, Jud judging by the schedule, I think before, we'd have been here till Monday. Yeah, I actually just don't think I could go up. I, I wouldn't be able to go. Up. Like I physically, my legs wouldn't get me up the steepest. Oh, they're starting their marathon from the same spot. Yeah, I thought it must be also. Awesome. Right, but you, you're in for sprint. Yeah. This is the sprint. Back on our race clock. We'll try and get through a seven times up and down slowly. 23 hours, 22 minutes and 10 seconds. And your next finisher, this is David Jackson. David Jackson, congratulations, Dave. Wow.
Jack O'Reilly in 23, 22, 36, raising money for Head for Change charity, supporting those suffering with brain injuries. Because having had my own brain injury back in 2013, incredible. Jacko, well done, congratulations. Fantastic um, event, Snowden 24. So like we started at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning and finished at 10 a.m. Sunday. And it was a case of like, do as many repetitions as you can, going up and down, rest whenever you want, do whatever you want. Um, I managed to do five repetitions and then had a little bit of a sleep um, for about an hour and a half, two hours, um, or at least lay down for that amount of time. And then got back out for one final rep, so managed to do six. And on that sixth and final rep for me, it was very clear as I got to the top, I could barely take another step. I knew that I wouldn't be able to, uh, to complete another rep. Um, and we'd already seen mountain rescue helicopter come out. I was getting to the point where my legs just couldn't do it. And I was worried, I didn't worried, but I just, I wanted to be sensible. I wanted, I didn't want to be the guy that gets stuck on the steep bits, not being able to take another step up, not being able to take a step down and having to get mountain rescue out. Cause that's not what it's, uh, what it's about. And I, in that sixth and final rep, I had the great pleasure of coming across Rob, who um, was the current leader and he was having a bit of a bad time of it and he was sat down just after halfway house um, and he was, excuse my French, he was, he was fucked and he was like, I'm done, I'm just going to go back down. Um, and I was like, well, why are you winning? You need to, you can't, you're winning. And I, would, I mean, I felt horrific at this point. But just the concept of him turning round back down, like just energised me and I was like, right, I am going to be your hype man. Um, gave him some LMNT um, drink sachets and off, uh, off he went. And uh, I'm pleased to say that he went, we walked together for about an hour and then he left me for dead again. And then he got back down as the winner with eight reps, a phenomenal, phenomenal um, effort. And uh, tip of the cap to you, Rob, if you're watching this. So I was totally happy in the end when I just went, right, I can't do no more. I'm just gonna get back down by the 10 o'clock cutoff to make this sixth rep count. Um, I think it made me, I came 37th out of 140 people. I was really pleased with that. I was really happy um, with how I performed and how it going. I think it was just unrealistic for me to have um, done anything else. I think I was hoping to maybe have done seven if things went really well in terms of my schedule or you know if it didn't go quite so well I'd have only managed to probably have done five and six was my middle of the road so um, the reality of of that is it's about 60 miles with about just short of 6,000 meters of elevation during those 24 hours um, and that for me I would never have been able to do that last year. So I'm really pleased with the training that I've documented, particularly across the podcast, um, with the breath holding and the very specific hill up and down work. Um, but things I, just being honest with you, things that I made a mistake on. Again, I learned a lot from the Ring of Fire. If you haven't seen that video, check out the Ring of Fire video. That's the 216 kilometer ultramarathon around Anglesey Coastal Path over three days, which I did last September. And I made some mistakes on that in my preparation. I was much more prepared for this event. I knew the course in terms of going up the Clamberis path. Um, I didn't know uh, how many reps I would do, but I knew how fast I could do one when I'm fresh. I had no idea how slow I would go when uh, things got tough. So that was the the unknown, I had my, I guess my, my food, I had my, um, my feet taped up, I had my Vivos, I had two different pairs um, of Vivos that I would be able to switch between because I found that swapping shoes between reps made a massive difference for just giving a little bit of freshness, changing socks, changing pants, all those things that I didn't do during um, the Ring of Fire. 
a lot of you've been asking which Vivos I had been wearing. Um, primarily the the swim the new swim runs, um, which got the Michelin sole, fantastic shoe, um, great when the weather is terrible like it had been up here. Um, uh, drain really easy, like literally designed for like running and swimming. And so if it's keeping it down, then you're absolutely uh, you're absolutely fine in that. That trail Michelin tread gives you some really good grip and a little bit of um, a little bit of protection from you know the, the path on Clamberis is very rocky uh, in places. Uh, that being said, Kieran came up completely barefoot um, on rep four, and rep four was where I made another mis a similar mistake as I'd made before, and that mistake was I became complacent. But I didn't realise it at the time. I thought I'd become confident or belief. I believed, I remember saying to him, coming down on rep four, feeling good, feeling great, um, to be fair, for knowing that I'd done nearly 40 miles and 4,000 meters. And I said to Kieran, I said, look, that rep was slow. It felt slow, it felt hard, but we're gonna get down in like about three hours, three and a bit. I was like, if that's as slow, as it's gonna get, and I can just I can just keep plodding like that. I'm gonna do I'm I'm gonna be able to do my nine reps like not in the 24 hours, but I felt like that was so slow, yet it was still within about three and a bit hours, three and a half hours, that I would be able to just keep that pace up. And that put me into the trap of then believing, but by believing, I didn't realise I was becoming complacent. Becoming complacent was something that got me in a hole every time during the ring of fire. Every time I relaxed and got complacent and thought, yes, I'm going to do this, it put me in a hole. And I think that thinking about the end too early is a flipping big no-no for me. This is just for me. It may be similar for you, but it's mindsets and mindsets, right? But that is a mistake I've made again. And, you know, we make mistakes and we learn from some of them. We make mistakes. Sometimes we have to make mistakes multiple times before it starts to sink in. But that was a mistake I made again. Uh, the other mistake I made, again, was disrespecting the event. Um, again, I feel bad for saying it. Um, hopefully this will be the, the next time, that the, the, the last time, sorry, that I do that. I disrespected the, the Ring of Fire last year. I didn't realise what I was getting myself in for. I didn't do enough volume in my training. Um, and I and I and I paid for it. And I hurt. I hurt for it, um, and scraped through by my fingernails. Um, now, with this event, Snowden Twenty Four, I went okay. I know I can't do nine reps for Everesting it in twenty four hours. I'll just carry on after the event. There's a reason why no one else is carrying on after the event. After twenty four hours of running up Snowden six times or whatever you do, you are fucked. <laughs> Sorry, my French, but you are. And it was naive at best for me to think, oh, I'll just do a few reps afterwards. I'll just do yeah, however long it takes. We'll just be fine. No, Jacko, it wasn't fine and it wasn't happening. Um, and I was happy to just accept that on my last rep when I made that decision, like, I'm done. I was at the top and it's like, we're coming back down and we're getting back for, uh, for 10 o'clock. So this rep counts within the event. I got up in about just over two hours, two hours 15, I think, but it took me two hours 45 to get down on that last rep, which was the first time I'd been slower on the way down. You can imagine that's, that's not a good sign. Uh, things were, things were, things were, things were sore. Um, but I was very happy. We finished, sees all smiles, happy days. I, and I think that there was a little bit within me slightly nagging that I'd said I was going to do the nine reps for Head for Change charity, but I'd give it my best. And I was like, you can't do more than give it your best. Um, Sunday, pretty stiff. Monday, things starting to loosen off, but still stiff a bit. Tuesday, back at doing some work, working with some clients. Wednesday, traveling down to the Cotswolds for first proper bit of work, doing a corporate event on on Thursday in the beautiful Cotswolds. I was driving up to my sister's house in Wales on Thursday night, four hour drive from the Cotswolds, listening to Johnny Wilkins' podcast with Muji, Muji, 
amazing podcast. Check, definitely check that one out if you want to take an inward deep dive into yourself. Um, um, something happened in the, I don't actually, and this might sound weird, I don't think that this was my thought. Okay, that might sound weird. It wasn't like I heard an audible thing, but it didn't feel like I thought it. That's just, but something came like a, like a little whisper, like a sense, like something into which, I don't know, whatever you call it, but it was like, you got nothing to do tomorrow, Jacko, technically. And you're in Snowdonia. And last time I checked, you got three more reps to do, pal. I mean, it wasn't quite like that. It was just a bit like, you got three more reps. And I didn't dismiss it because it made me smile. And I was like, I sort of worked out. It was like, yeah, I could do that tomorrow. I was like, I'm actually, body's feeling all right. Still stiff, but like, I can run now. And I was like, I know it doesn't count. It doesn't count towards anything. Like, no one cares, like, in a, in a good way. And, but it excited me. And I was like, yep, that's what I'm doing tomorrow. Back to the scene of the crime. It is Friday the 14th of July. Just picked up keys to new house in Wales, about 20 minutes away. We failed the nine rep challenge. Um, make no bones about it, we did six reps. Finished on Sunday at 10 a.m. And by Wednesday, legs were feeling all right again. Went on a little jog, feeling nice. Had some work on in the Cotswolds and it's a drive Thursday, four hours in the car up to North Wales to get the keys for the new house. And on the way up, there was just this little whisper, this little, you know, you're in the car for four hours on your own. This little whisper. You got three reps to do, Jacko. And I was like, where'd that come from? It was like, it, it was obviously my thought, but it didn't really feel like my thought. It was like, I've got three reps left to do. So here we are. And I said I'd do nine. I was very happy with the six and loved the event and it was amazing and I couldn't do any more a few days ago. But there was something nagging at me and Gonna finish this job. The views are stunning, even immediately, <laughs> and the weather is worse than the weekend. But what a great privilege to be able to go out and walk here again. the familiar site of the 2k gate I've been questioning and asking myself a lot of like okay so if you are if you have that sense that urge that may be weird wording but you need to do three more you've got those three to do like where that comes from and is it is it for the right reasons? What are the reasons? Is it... Is it stupid? Is it ego? Like, what is it? Um, but the thing I come back to is once I'd had that thought and then like, yeah, actually, I moved the stuff in, dropped some stuff off of the house, it's like, I actually haven't got anything else to do on Friday. I could go and do those three reps. And I smiled. And I got excited. And it felt right. Which feels like a good reason to me. It's windy.
Should have got the train up. It'd be easier. The great thing about uh, Widba, the mountain, aka Snowden, options to come up for everybody. This, this was a familiar sight for our turnaround point. Right now it's pretty windy, like very, very windy. And clearly you can't see a bleeding thing. Just be careful back down. Just uh, checking in, coming down, about to finish the first rep. We got up in 122, something like that. And we're coming down. Like 220 by the time we get down. So up in about 120, down in about an hour. Going, uh, yeah. Reasonable pace, but like steady. Um, the last bit, this is the horrible bit. Look how steep it is. You probably can't appreciate how steep this is unless you've been down here, but it's like, you're putting the brakes on. Anyway, it's windy up there. It's wet up there. There's some people, as always, when you go up these, not that I'm like exceptionally experienced, but like I have a waterproof on, I've got waterproof in the back, I've got a foil blanket, I've got a whistle. People up there with not even a waterproof and yeah, the weather's not amazing. Be careful. We got one rep done and then the heavens opened and the, the I mean, it was completely soaked through. The wind was bad and um, I didn't want to do something that was dangerous. Um, so we called it a day and went, look, we'll see what the weather's like the next day, i.e. today, Saturday. And um, the weather was looking good early. So I set the alarm for 5 a.m., got up to start at on the mountain, at, at, or the bottom of the mountain at 6. <coughs> right, it's now Saturday, the 15th, just gone 6 o'clock a.m., we're back. Let's call this part two of part two. It's still quite windy but not too um, but it's dry so and it's supposed to be dry until about 12 but <laughs> if you look at the clouds willing we're gonna try and do these final two reps wish me luck just over 2k in to this one which is rep one today rep eight if it counts if anyone's keeping going I'm going to take a while, guess. But it's raining at the top. Well, even halfway up. Just see halfway house. But 
nice and clear down here. Which is nice. Your tent. There's halfway house, <coughs> just on the corner there. Wind's quite strong, but we're sheltered. A bit here, so I thought I'd share with you a few thoughts. We're 34 minutes in, nearly at halfway house. It's like sometimes the time just goes faster. Um, and you may be thinking, because I think this when I see other people do stuff, you're like, God, are you not sore? Like, what's wrong? It's like, yeah. Like, my right foot is hurting, I've got a bruise, I don't know what from. My left hip, left knee is a bit sore. But we're okay and we're jogging bits that we can jog and we're walking the bits that are steep. And we're getting it done. And look at the views, like look at that. How can you not? Um, and yeah, sometimes the perception is like I said it to a few people during the event, during the actual 24 hour before event, <laughs> not the aftermath now. And it was like, I was seeing particularly the women, a lot of women just smiling, beaming as they're running past you. And I go, What is the matter with you? Are you not sore? This is like the sixth rep you've done or the seventh rep you've done. And hey, you're still smiling. And it's just like, yeah, it all hurts, but it's great, isn't it, being out here? And yeah, it's attitude, I think. You learn a lot of things about your own attitude, your own perception of what you can do. And it's powerful, it's mega. Tiny bit sheltered from the wind here, but it's gone windy. Bad up here. You can't see a lot. Sort of what you'd expect. Very close to the leveling out bit at the top, so I don't know. Kilometer and a half to go. It's like, just get this bit done, get back down, get underneath the cloud, and then reassess, but just stay safe. It's not often you're at the top of Snowdon, completely on your own. It's a bit scary, and it's probably telling us how bad the weather is. Check the point and turn around. I'm going to be honest, it's awful. I'm hopeful to get up again because the weather is supposed to be okay till 12, but it's sketchy. Up in 128. Tell you what, you come, you come out of that wind. Wow, this is nice. Right, these Vivos. They fit like a glove. We're doing a nice bit on the grass. We're starting to see some sun down the bottom. In memory, not in memory, but in, inspired by Kieran that came on rep four did the whole thing barefoot, um, enjoying a bit of grounding and nature on the way down. Bit slow down, 240 in total. Uh, so what's that? 110, something like that. Um, and... Hey, yeah. How are you doing? 
I'm coming back up, so I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> um, yes, so down here the weather is nice and there is uh, a lot of people going up. I've been warning them about how bad it is at the top. Um, hey, um, but seeing loads of people going up now, just walking up, gives me the confidence to like, okay, get yourself back up there, Jacko, after you've had a coffee. Um, make your cake uh, and whether we make it all the way to the top or not will be dependent on the weather and so be it um, as I've been warning others I shall warn myself but let's get back to base camp back to the camper van get that coffee on and uh, have a little break and then we'll go back up for the final time <coughs> They are the footsteps of someone on the last freaking one. Ah, which feels good, even though it makes no difference, does it? It's just the same. It's just, it's just what's in your head, what you're making it out to be. But it feels good. Um, and I'm under no illusions as to whether the weather allows us up or not drenched a minute ago but i've had a coffee we're uh fueled up there's energy for the for the final rep we'll see if we can catch that lady that did peak divide um potentially we'll see um yeah and we'll see if the weather lets us get to the top or not if it does or it doesn't i know ultimately that no one cares in a nice way and that's cool like it's good and, and i care but I don't care because I know it doesn't matter. Um, but it does. It's that like, yeah, I don't know. Someone clever would be able to explain what that psychology is. I'm just uh, going to enjoy this one because I imagine it'll be a while before we go up again. <laughs> Even a little bit of sunshine. I mean, <laughs> It may not last long, but it's dry. The sun peaks out every now and again. Like I say the weather can change on the mountain very quickly. It's typically we think it change bad, which it may well do. But feeling positive about maybe seeing something at the top, getting to the top. Long may. Sunshine. Over there, there is a sign. Look at that. Train. We got trains. We got rainbows. We got views of the mountains. You can see them. What a treat for the last dance. It's about to get up. So uh, <laughs> it's just absolutely hammered it down. It's just eased up a second. Just me think that yeah, today's cold exposure is just courtesy of being outside in the the cold water <laughs> therapy is happening just because of the rain. You don't always have to have an ice bath. <laughs> this is called multitasking. Who says men can't multitask? Turn around, boy, finally.
here we are coming to the bottom gates for the final time. Oh, put this on for the race. It's the one rep race going on. Uh, three hours and one minute for the final rep. We've got a few hundred meters to jog to the van. David Dunn. Said we'd do nine. Just took a few extra days. <laughs> but we've done it. Please donate to the charity, Head for Change, supporting rugby players like myself that have uh, had brain injuries and obviously a lot not made the same type of recovery I've been lucky to make. So please support the charity. It means the world to us. And I'm pleased to say we got the two reps done, the two the remaining reps, rep eight and nine, but it's sort of, it's a bit stupid, it's a bit irrelevant, and I know no one cares and it doesn't matter because you could go, well, if you add all of them I've ever done in my life going up so I've probably done 20, I don't know. So it wasn't part of the event, it wasn't even the next day of the event, it was like the end of the week. Um, but I said I'd do nine, I didn't think there would be that many days in between. I didn't think it would take like two extra days as well as having a four day break. Um, we got them done. We got the reps done. It felt good to do it. It, it. it was a bit of a relief just at the top. We're getting down from the top to the safety because I've never been up there when it's been that windy. Um, I actually dropped down onto all fours at one point. Um, so I'm glad it's back down safely, a bit of relief for that. Um, and definitely a realization before getting it completed that, that it doesn't matter, but I wanted to do it. I gave my best and the weather allowed us to, to do it. I believe we are far more capable than we, than we think we are, um, I think that breathing is such a massive part of how you can keep your nervous system a bit less stressed and a bit less fatigued and how you can use it to improve your recovery. I think that's absolutely massive. I think that's one of the main reasons why I was able to actually run again uh, three or four days later. Um, I know a lot of people that took part in the event wouldn't it be running. Um, that's not me sort of bragging around. That's just saying like, that is the difference that the breathing makes when you're trying to access some faster recovery. It has got to be the greatest thing because it's going to impact your nervous system directly. Like we'll often say the nervous system is the remote control. Or sorry, <laughs> the breathing is the remote control to our nervous system. And if, when you want to put that on recovery mode, it's your breathing that's going to initiate that. Um, so and there's loads of stuff on my YouTube about the other videos about that that you can that you can access as well as at probreathwork.com. We've got the free Foundations of Breathing course um, that has got details on that. And then also, if you want to take a real deep dive, we've got the Sports Performance course and the uh, High Intensity Training uh, Breath Training course, both of which have uh, important recovery elements within those two courses. So yeah, I, I knew before I got to the top there was not gonna be, or finishing getting down safely to the bottom, I knew that there wouldn't be some sort of like, yes, massive like acceleration of like, of like, yes, I've done it. Like feeling so like pumped and got like, it felt good, but it was in its place of, I did what I wanted to do. I knew it didn't matter. Um, I knew people, very thankfully donated money already and, and people were very supportive of the of the six reps I did during the event. Um, and ultimately, I think that's one of the best lessons that we'll learn. You are far more capable than you think you are, but equally, these things, they don't matter. Like, like they do in that you'll learn stuff and you'll grow so they matter but they also don't matter these events like I'm going to do I want to do more of these events meet some amazing people but how well we do in them whether we have to turn around and come back down or stop whatever like it doesn't matter because 
whether you win it, complete it or not, we're not going to find the thing that we are looking for because that thing we're looking for you've already got it's yourself and it's inside here somewhere or here or wherever everywhere in you ultra endurance events for sure I think can be a great way to help you go find that and go on that journey. Breath work, breath training, particularly the down regulation piece, the, the breath meditations that, that we do, for sure they do too. Um, and I'm sure there's a whole load of other things that people would suggest too. I know for myself, and if it's an encouragement for others, if the, you if you feel compelled or your intuition or it just is the message is resonating then yeah choose to do a physical thing that that may challenge you and see what that journey goes on choose to do some some breath training some some down regulation piece particularly if you're gonna try and go on that inward journey connect with your breath that's going on the inside um and see where it takes you i actually didn't expect this video to end like that and probably um you didn't either but hey look we're bit this is me being very real very honest with you I'd love to know if any of that resonates with you, what you think, like message in the comments. I had so much great support after the Ring of Fire uh, video last year. Apologies, this is me on my iPhone and not some massive cinematic uh, drones and, and the amazing uh, editing and filming skills of uh, Jack Two, who uh, filmed the Ring of Fire documentary. But this was raw and this was, again, honest as ever and thank you for everyone that supported thank you to um, those that came along and actually ran a rep with me it meant the world to me that people made the effort to go to do that not only are we stronger than we think we are more capable than we think we are we are definitely stronger together and something that i'm looking out for and wanting to do is some other events take part in some other events where you get to come in and do some of it or all of it or whatever. Um, I'm definitely being pulled towards that, like let's do some events that like bring us together collectively to go on some challenges and go on some adventures and go on some journeys. Um, that for me would be very special. So if you're interested, hit us up in the comments, let us know what you thought of the this as a, as a whole and then those thoughts about that inward journey and then thoughts about going on and taking part in a challenge in some way together. Um, probably not later this year, probably 2024. So that gives us some time to train. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe somewhere if you want to. Um, I very much appreciate that. Thank you so much for the donations. The link for donating to the Just Giving page, which is for the Head for Change charity, supporting rugby players specifically that have suffered brain injuries and supporting them and their families. Um, thank you for everyone that's donated so far. If you haven't donated yet and you can afford something, anything, please donate to the Just Giving page for Head for Change charity. You've been listening. Hopefully you've been breathing. I've been Jacko. Until next time. Keep it nasal.